Lesson number 104 is about abstract rational expressions. And our questions look a little bit different in this lesson. What we have to do here is find m. So in the end, we want to know what m is equal to. But what we have to begin is two terms, 1 over x plus b over m, equal to c. So what we need to do in this is to find our common denominator. Let's rewrite. We have 1 over x plus b over m is equal to c, and that would be c over 1. We can find our common denominator by multiplying x times m. So let's take each of our terms and multiply them by our common denominator, xm. When we multiply each thing by our common denominator, xm, we can see that we're going to get some things that will cancel out. The x's cancel in our first term, the m's cancel in our second term, and nothing cancels in our third term. So when we rewrite, it will look like this. We're going to get m times 1, which is m, plus x times b, which is x times b, is going to be equal to x, m, c. Now here, if we're trying to find m, we want to know what m is equal to, let's bring all of our m's together. We can bring all of our m's together by subtracting m on both sides. m minus m is 0. So on the left, we're left with xb. xb is going to be equal to xmc minus m. Now, if we want to go ahead and solve for this part, let's first factor. If we factor the m out of our terms, our two terms on our right-hand side, we'll be left with this. xb will be equal to m times xc minus 1, because m times 1 is going to be m. Now when we go through, we can find out what m is equal to. We can find out what m is equal to by dividing both sides by xc minus 1. What that will look like in the end will be xb over xc minus 1 is equal to m. So we found m. That's our final answer. We can't simplify this anymore because there's nothing we can factor. We've got our final answer. We've solved for m. We've found m. And we can move on to our next question. Let's look at another one. Here we have to find x. So if we want to find x, we'll go through the same process. The first step is to find our common denominator. a over b minus c over 1 is equal to d over x. Now as we go through this process, our common denominator is going to be b times x. And if we have b times x, we can multiply all of our terms by b times x. Let's look at that. what that would look like. We get a over b minus c over 1 is equal to d over x. Now let's multiply each term by that common denominator bx. Now we can see what will cancel out. In our first term, we're going to get the b's, which will cancel. In our second term, nothing cancels. In our third term, the x's cancel. So let's rewrite. We're going to get x times a minus b times x times c is equal to b times d. Now in this one, we're finding x. So let's factor out our x's. We're going to hit x times a minus bc will be equal to b times d. And then our last step to get x, well, just like the last problem, our last step to get x, it's going to be to divide by a minus bc. We could put that in parentheses so we can see that the a minus bc and a minus bc cancel. Then we do the same thing on the right side, a minus b times c. So we've got x x must be equal to, we'll finish off with the same color, x must be equal to b times d all over a minus b times c. We can't factor anything out of our division problem or our fraction on the right, so we've got our final answer of x. We've got one more. Let's look at the last one for today. 
Here we want to find x. This time we have four terms. Remember y is y over 1 and k is k over 1. So the first thing we need to do, find that common denominator. And it must be x times n. So when we rewrite, we're going to get a over x minus y over 1 plus m over n. And it's nice to leave the space here, so we multiply by our common denominator. We have room to show that work is equal to k over 1. So we multiply by our common denominator. And again, our common denominator is going to be x times n. And we'll do that each time. All right, now that we've got that, we can simplify. This is why we multiply by our common denominator. X's cancel. Nothing cancels here. The n's cancel. And then nothing cancels in the end. Let's rewrite. We're going to get na minus xny plus x times m is going to be equal to xnk. All right, in this one we're finding x. That means we need to bring all of our x's together. If we bring all of our x's together, let's go ahead and move all of our x's to the left-hand side. In order to do that, let's take our na and move it to the right-hand side first. So we're going to subtract na on both sides. When we do that, we'll be left with this. We're going to have, oops, wrong color, a negative x n y plus x m is equal to x n k minus n a. Now we can subtract our x n k from both sides, and that's going to allow us to get all of our x's together. So we can factor and solve. So we've got minus x n k. These two are not like terms because we have an x n k and an x n y, different variables. Let's rewrite so we can solve. So we get negative xnk minus xny plus xm is going to be equal to negative na. Now let's factor out our x's. We factor out our x's. We're going to factor out the x. And we're left with x times negative. Well, we've got a negative here. So we're going to have negative nk minus ny plus m. And that's all going to be equal to negative na. Our final step, our final step is to divide by everything x is being multiplied by. So our final step will give us this. We're going to have x is equal to, and we divide both sides by our term that x is being multiplied by, this trinomial in parentheses. So x is equal to negative na. All over, we have negative nk minus ny plus m. Now we could leave our answer like this, or we could simplify it one more time. If we simplify it one more time, we'll take the negatives and make them positives, and we'll switch the sign of our m. We'll reverse all of our signs, make them the opposite, and it would look like this. We'd have x is equal to na over nk plus ny just got enough room in here. I'm going to use a different color to finish it off. Easier to see. Minus M. This was NY. Minus M. And you can report your answer either way. Both answers are correct. Both answers will get you full credit. You can go ahead and box either one of those, whichever one you pick. And we can move on to our next question. A lesson practice will be on page 441. Make sure you've got your notes complete, and I'll see you during our next class.